Do you want to stop wasting money on unnecessary expenses? Now that's a question that resonates with most of us. We all yearn to save more, but often we find ourselves caught in the web of expenses that seem essential but are in fact avoidable. Today we are going to delve into five categories of expenses that can be trimmed down, or better yet, eliminated completely. First, we'll motor down the road of expensive cars and explore whether their price tags truly reflect their worth. Then we'll dial into the world of high-end phones and discuss whether their flashy features justify the cost. We'll also take a detour into the realm of frequent home delivery, examining the impact it has on our wallets. Next, we'll navigate through the intricate labyrinth of banking products and investments shedding light on their hidden costs. Finally, we'll scrutinize those costly gadgets that often end up gathering dust. If your goal is to save money, then stick around. You might find these tips helpful. First on the list, expensive cars. Do they really offer value for your money? Now, think about it. Luxury cars with their glossy finishes and top-tier features can be tantalizing. Yet the price tags attached to these beauties are enough to make your heart skip a beat. Let's break this down. Consider the cost of acquiring a high-end car. You're looking at figures that can easily run into the six figures. For what, a few extra features, a brand name? Sure, they're nice to have, but in the grand scheme of things, they don't drastically alter the primary function of a car, which is to transport you from point A to point B. Now let's talk about depreciation. Cars, especially luxury ones, depreciate faster than a melting ice cream on a hot summer day. The moment you drive your shiny new car off the dealership lot, it loses value. A car is a depreciating asset, and luxury cars depreciate at a much faster rate than your basic models. Let's not forget about maintenance. Luxury cars come with luxury maintenance costs. You'll shell out more on repairs, parts, and servicing. That's not even mentioning the higher insurance premiums that come with owning a more expensive car. All right, let's put all this into perspective. You've got a vehicle that costs an arm and a leg, depreciates rapidly, and drains your wallet with maintenance and insurance costs. Is it really worth it? The truth is, basic models can serve the primary function of a car just as well. They get you from point A to point B, and they do it without burning a hole in your pocket. They may not have all the bells and whistles of a luxury car, but they sure do offer value for your money. So next time you're tempted by the allure of a high-end car, remember, it's not just about the initial purchase price. It's about the total cost of ownership. And more often than not, that cost is way higher than you might think. Remember, a car is a depreciating asset. Don't let it drain your savings. Next up, high-end phones. Are they worth the extra bucks? Let's dive into this. First off, high-end phones are undeniably attractive. They're sleek, they're fast, and they're packed with the latest tech. From augmented reality to facial recognition, these devices are like miniature portable supercomputers. But here's the question. Do you really need all those bells and whistles? Consider this. The average smartphone user primarily uses their device for calling, texting, browsing the internet, and using social media. Now, can all these tasks be carried out on a less expensive phone? Absolutely. The vast majority of mid-range phones can handle these tasks with ease. Sure, high-end phones may have a shinier display or a faster processor, but ask yourself, would you notice the difference in everyday use? For the average user, the answer is likely no. High-end phones often offer marginal improvements in areas that don't significantly impact the user experience for the majority of tasks. Let's talk about cameras, a key selling point for many high-end phones. Yes, they take stunning photos, but consider this. Mid-range phones have made tremendous strides in camera technology, often boasting impressive features like multi-lens systems and advanced image processing. For most of us, these cameras are more than capable of capturing those cherished moments. And then there's the issue of depreciation. Like a new car driving off the lot, a high-end phone loses a significant portion of its value the moment you take it out of the box. A year or two down the line, when the next big thing comes out, your high-end phone won't seem so high-end anymore. Finally, consider the cost. High-end phones can easily run into four figures, and that's a hefty chunk of change. If you're looking to save money, opting for a mid-range phone can free up funds for other important areas of your life. So before you splurge on that fancy phone, consider if you really need those extra features. Remember, 
A phone is a tool, not a status symbol. Choose wisely, and your wallet will thank you. How about frequent home delivery? Convenient, yes, but at what cost? Let's delve into the world of food delivery, a realm that has seen exponential growth in recent years. The convenience of having your favorite meals delivered straight to your doorstep is undeniable. Yet, it's worth considering the cost implications of this convenience. Imagine this, you're ordering a pizza. The base price might be $10, but then you add in the delivery fee, typically around $3 to $5. Don't forget the tip for the delivery person, another $2 to $3. Suddenly your $10 pizza has become a $16 to $18 expense. And we're just talking about one meal here. Now, let's compare that with cooking at home. The cost of ingredients for a homemade pizza might come to around $6, and that's estimating on the higher side. You're already saving $10 to $12 on just one meal. Multiply that by the number of times you order out in a week, a month, a year. The savings potential is staggering, but it's not just about the money, there's also the health aspect to consider. When you prepare your meals at home, you have complete control over what goes into your food. You can opt for fresh, healthier ingredients and avoid the excessive salt, sugar, and unhealthy fats often found in takeout food. Of course, we're not suggesting you completely banish home delivery from your life. There's a time and a place for everything. A busy work day when you can't find the time to cook a special occasion, or those days when you just want to treat yourself, but making it a frequent habit, that's when the costs start to add up. In conclusion, frequent home delivery might seem like a lifesaver, especially in our fast-paced lives. But when you crunch the numbers and consider the health implications, it becomes clear that this convenience comes at a price. Home-cooked meals are not only healthier, but also lighter on your wallet. Let's talk about banking products and investments. Are they as profitable as they seem? Often, we're lured in by the glossy brochures and persuasive pitches that promise high returns. But what's hidden in the fine print? High fees and charges that can eat into those promised profits. Think about it. If you're investing $100 and the bank charges you $5 as a fee, that's 5% of your investment gone before you even start. And if your investment only grows by 2% a year, it'll take you over two years just to break even. And then there are the low returns. Many banking products, especially the safer ones like savings accounts and fixed deposits, offer returns that barely keep up with inflation. Your money might be growing, but its buying power is shrinking. So what's the alternative? Well, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. But here are a few suggestions. First, educate yourself about financial products. Understand what you're investing in and what the risks and rewards are. Second, consider low-cost index funds. These are funds that track the performance of a specific market index, like the S&P 500. They have low fees and have historically provided solid returns over the long term. Third, think about peer-to-peer -peer lending or crowdfunding platforms. These can offer higher returns, but remember, they also come with higher risk. Lastly, consider working with a financial advisor, but make sure they're fee only, which means they're paid a flat fee for their advice rather than a commission based on what products they sell you. Your hard-earned money deserves better. Be smart with your investments. Lastly, costly gadgets, are they truly necessary? Let's discuss this. The allure of these pricey gizmos is undeniable. They're shiny, they're new, they're cutting edge. But the key question to ask ourselves is this. Do these gadgets genuinely add value to our lives? More often than not, the answer is a resounding no. What we're really buying here isn't utility. It's the thrill of the purchase, that adrenaline rush when we click buy now, the anticipation as we unbox our new toy. But soon enough, the novelty wears off, the excitement fades, and we're left with an expensive piece of technology that serves little purpose. This is the cycle of impulse buying, and it's a hard one to break. But here's the secret. Resisting this temptation can save you a hefty chunk of change. Instead of falling for the latest tech trend, invest in gadgets that you really need and will use. Resist the temptation. Invest in gadgets that you really need and will use. So are you ready to stop wasting money on these unnecessary expenses? Let's take a moment to recap. We've talked about how owning an expensive car often doesn't add much value compared to a basic one, 
and how high-end phones can be a pricey luxury with negligible benefits for the average user. We've also explored how frequent home deliveries can add up to excessive costs over time. We've delved into the world of banking products and investments, highlighting the often high costs and low returns. And finally, we've discussed how costly gadgets can be impulsive purchases, often devoid of true added value. Remember, the key to saving money isn't about depriving yourself. It's about spending wisely. It's about understanding the true value of things and not being swayed by brand names or societal pressures. Share your own money-saving methods in the comments below. Let's learn from each other and save together.